Hi everyone, and welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back, putting up with my nonsense. Let's see, what are we making today? I'm calling it a globe pendant, but you can call it a beaded pendant or beaded bead pendant. Because you're going to need one large bead, either 14 millimeter or 16 millimeter, and seven smaller beads, three to four millimeters in size. Right about then. Um, in this particular video, I'm using a 16 millimeter bead in the written tutorial that'll be available for you know, really inexpensively in my Etsy shop. I'll, I write it for a 14 millimeter bead. For 16 millimeter beads, you're going to need four pieces of 20 gauge wire that are 11 inches long and 28 gauge wire. I tried making one with 26 gauge wire for the video and I didn't bother doing any of the math and figuring it out ahead of time and messed it up completely and tore it all apart and said well I'm gonna go back to the 28 gauge wire for the video and it'll show up I hope well enough. And today's Wikipedia article is called to call ancient history. It's about um, when ancient history started and the different phases ancient history went through. And so well, let's get started. Ancient history is the aggregate of past events from the beginning of writing in recorded human history and extending as far as late antiquity. The phrase may be used either to refer to the period of time or the academic discipline. The academic study of ancient history, either the scientific, that is, archaeology, or humanistic. The span of recorded history is roughly 5,000 years, beginning with the Sumerian cuneiform script, with the oldest coherent text from about 2,600 BC. Ancient history covers all continents inhabited by humans in the period 3,000 BC to AD 500. The Three Age System periodizes ancient history into the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, and the Iron Age, with recorded history generally considered to begin with the Bronze Age. The start and end of the Three Ages varies between world regions, and in many regions the Bronze Age is generally considered to begin a few centuries prior to 3000 BC, while the end of the Iron Age varies from the early 1st millennium BC in some regions to the late 1st millennium AD in others. The broad term, ancient history, is not to be confused with the classical antiquity, the period that follows the Iron Age. Classical antiquity refers to the period of Mediterranean history during which the civilization of ancient Greece and Rome flourished, from the first Olympiad in 776 BC and the founding of Rome in 753 BC to the middle of the first millennium BC. The latter part of classical antiquity is known as late antiquity. Although the ending date of ancient history is disputed, some Western scholars use the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476 AD, the closure of the Platonic Academy in 529 AD, the death of the Emperor Justinian in 565 AD, the coming of Islam or the rise of Charlemagne as the end of the ancient and classical European history. Outside of Europe, there have been difficulties with the 450 to 500 time frame for the transition from ancient to post-classical times. During the time period of ancient history starting roughly from 3000 BC, the world population was already exponentially increasing due to the Neolithic Revolution, which was in full progress. According to the Hyde estimates from the Netherlands, world population increased exponentially in this period. In 10,000 BC, in prehistory, the world population has stood at 2 million, rising to 45 million by 3,000 BC. By the rise of the Iron Age, in 1,000 BC, the population had risen to 72 million. By the end of the period in 500 AD, the world population is thought to have stood at 209 million. In 10,500 years, the world population increased by 100 times. Study Historians have two major ways of understanding the ancient world, archaeology and the study of source texts. 
primary sources are those sources closest to the origin of the information or idea under study. Primary sources have been distinguished from secondary sources, which often cite, comment on, or build upon primary sources. Archaeology Archaeology is the excavation and study of artifacts in an effort to interpret and reconstruct past human behavior. Archaeologists excavate the ruins of ancient cities looking for clues as to how the people of the time period lived. Some important discoveries by archaeologists studying ancient history include the Egyptian pyramids, giant tombs built by the ancient Egyptians beginning around 2600 BC as the final resting places for their royalty. The study of ancient city, the study of the ancient cities of Harappa, now Pakistan, Mahenjo-daro in Pakistan, and Lofo in India, South Asia. The city of Pompeii in Italy, an ancient Roman city preserved by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius in AD 79. The state of preservation is so great that it is a valuable window into Roman culture and provided insight into the culture of the Etruscans and the Samnites. The Terracotta Army, the mausoleum of the first Qin Emperor in ancient China. The discovery of Canossus by Minos Calapuninos and Sir Arthur Evans. The discovery of Troy by Heino Chinu. Source text. Most of what is known about the ancient world comes from the accounts of antiquity's own historians. Although it is important to take into account the bias of each ancient author, their accounts are the basis for the understanding of the ancient past. Some of the more notable ancient writers include Herodotus, Thucydides, Arian, Plutarch, Polybius, Simacon, Seleust, Livy, Josephus, Suntonius, and Tacitus. The fundamental difficulty of studying ancient history is that recorded histories cannot document the entirety of human events, and only a fraction of those documents have survived into the present day. Furthermore, the reliability of the information obtained from those surviving records must be considered. Few people were capable of writing histories, as literacy was not widespread in almost any culture until long after the end of ancient history. The earliest known systematic historical thought emerged in ancient Greece, beginning with Herodotus of Halicarnassus. Thucydides, Thucydides largely eliminated divine causality in his account of the war between Athens and Sparta, establishing a rationalistic element which set a precedent for subsequent Western historical writings. He was also the first to distinguish between cause and immediate origins of an event. The Roman Empire was an ancient culture with a relatively high literacy rate. Many works by its most widely read historians are lost. For example, Livy, a Roman historian who lived in the first century BC, wrote a history of Rome called Ab Urbe Condida from the founding of the city in 144 volumes. Only 35 volumes still exist, although short summaries of most of the rest do exist. Indeed, no more than a minority of the work of any major Roman historian has survived. Timeline of Ancient History this gives a listed timeline ranging from 3300 BC to 1600 AD that provides an overview of ancient history. Chronology Prehistory Prehistory is the period before written history, also known as the Stone Age, and is divided into the Paleolithic earliest, Mesolithic, and the Neolithic. The early human migrations in the lower Paleolithic saw Homo erectus spread across Eurasia. 1.8 million years ago. The controlled, use of the, the controlled use of fire first occurred 800,000 years ago in the Middle Paleolithic. 250,000 years ago, Homo sapiens emerged in Africa. 60 to 70,000 years ago, some Homo sapiens migrated out of Africa along the coastal route to South and Southeast Asia and reached Australia 50,000 years ago. Modern humans spread, spread from Asia to the Near East Europe was first reached by modern humans 40,000 years ago. 
Humans migrated to the Americas about 15,000 years ago in the Upper Paleolithic. The 10th millennium BC is the earliest given date for the invention of agriculture in the beginning of the ancient era. Gobekli Tepe was erected by hunter-gatherers in the 10th millennium BC, 11,500 years ago, before the advent of sedentism. Together, the Navali Kori it has revolutionized understanding of the Eurasian Neolithic. In the 7th millennium BC, Cheyahu culture began in China. By the 5th millennium BC, the late Neolithic civilization saw the invention of the wheel and the spread of proto-writing. In the 4th millennium BC, the Kuchutenti Tepilia culture in the Ukraine, Moldovia, Romania region develops. By 3400 BC, proto-literate cuneiform is spread in the Middle East. The 30th century BC, referred to as the Early Bronze Age II, saw the beginning of the literate period of Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt around the 27th century BC. The Old Kingdom of Egypt and the First Dynasty of Uruk are founded according to the earliest reliable regional eras. Middle to Late Bronze Age. The Bronze Age forms a part of the Three Age system. It follows the Neolithic Age in some areas of the world. In most areas of civilization, bronze smelting became the foundation for more advanced societies. There was some contrast with the New World societies, who often still preferred stones to metal for utilitarian purposes. Modern historians have identified five original civilizations which emerged in the time period. Sumer, in the Fertile Crescent, Indus Valley in ancient South Asia, Early Tu in the North China Plain, Norte Chico in the Andes, and Olmec in Mesoamerica. The first civilizations emerged in Sumer in the southern region of Mesopotamia, now part of modern-day modern Iraq. By 3000 BC, Sumerian city-states had collectively formed civilizations with government, religion, divisions of labor, and writing. Among the city-states, Ur was among the most significant. In the 24th century BC, the Akkadian Empire was founded in Mesopotamia. From Sumer civilizations and bronze smelting spread westward to Egypt, the Minoans and the Hittites. The first intermediate period of Egypt, the 22nd century BC, was followed by the Middle Kingdom of Egypt between the 21st and the 17th century BC. Around the 18th century BC, the second intermediate period of Egypt began. Egypt was a superpower at the time. By 1600 BC, Mycenae and Greece developed and invaded the remains of the Minoan civilization. The beginning of Hittite dominance in the eastern Mediterranean region is also seen in the 17th century BC. The time from the 16th to the 11th centuries BC around the Nile is called the New Kingdom of Egypt. Between 1550 and 1292 BC, the Amarna period developed in Egypt. East of the Iranian world was the Indus Valley Civilization, which organized cities neatly in grid patterns. This civilization diminished after 1900 BC and was later replaced with the Indo-Aryan peoples who established Vedic cultures. The beginning of the Shang Dynasty emerged in China in this period, and there was evidence of a fully developed Chinese writing system. The Shang Dynasty is the first Chinese regime recognized by Western scholars through Chinese historians who insist that the Xi Dynasty preceded it. The Shang Dynasty practiced forced labor to complete public projects. There is evidence of massive ritual burial. Across the ocean, the earliest known civilization of the Americas appeared in the river valleys of the desert coast of central modern-day Peru. The Norte Chico civilization's first city flourished around 3100 BC. The Olmecs are supposed to appear later in Mesoamerica between 14th and 13th centuries. Early Iron Age. The Iron Age is the last principal period in the Three Age system preceded by the Bronze Age. Its date and context vary depending on the country or geograph geographical region. The Iron Age overall was characterized by the prevalent smelting of iron with ferrous metallurgy and the use of carbon steel. 
melted iron provided more durable than the, proved more durable than the earlier metals such as copper or bronze and allowed for more productive societies. The Iron Age took place at a different times in different parts of the world and comes to an end when the society began to maintain historical records. During the 13th to 12th centuries BC, the Ramesside period occurred in Egypt. Around 1200 BC, the Trojan War was thought to have taken place. By around 1180 BC, the disintegration of the Hittite Empire was underway. The collapse of the Hittites was part of the larger scale Bronze Age collapse, which took place in the ancient Near East around 1200 BC. In Greece, the Mycenae and the Minoans both disintegrated. A wave of sea peoples attacked many countries. Only Egypt survived intact. Afterwards, some entirely new successor civilizations arose in the eastern Mediterranean. In 1046 BC, the Zhu force, led by King Wu of Zhu, overthrew the last king of the Shang dynasty. The Zhu dynasty was established in China shortly thereafter. During the Zhu era, China embraced the feudal embraced a feudal society of decentralized power. Iron Age China then dissolved into the Warring States period, where possibly millions of soldiers fought each other over feudal struggles. Karak is an early Iron Age site in Balakistan, Pakistan, going back to about 1200 BC. This period is believed to be the beginning of the Iron Age in India, in the subcontinent. Around the same time came the Vedas, the oldest sacred text for the Hindu religion. In 1000 BC, the Manaean Kingdom began in Western Asia. Around the 10th to 7th centuries BC, the Neo-Assyrian Empire developed in Mesopotamia. In 800 BC, the rise of the Greek city-states began. In 776 BC, the first recorded Olympic Games were held. In contrast to neighboring cultures, the Greek city-states did not become a single militaristic empire, but competed with each, with each other in separate polis. Axial Age The preceding Iron Age is often thought to have ended in the Middle East around 550 BC, due to the rise of histori historiography. The Axial Age is used to describe history between 800 and 200 BC of Eurasia, including ancient Greece, Iran, India, and China. Widespread trade and communications between distinct regions of this period, including the rise of the Silk Road. This period saw the rise of philosophy and proselytizing religions. Philosophy, religion, and science were diverse in the hundred schools of thought, producing thinkers such as Confucius, Lao Tzu, and Mozu during the 6th century BC. Similar trends emerged throughout Eurasia and India with the rise of Buddhism. In the Near East with Zoroastrianism and Judaism, and in the West with ancient Greek philosophy. In these developments, religions and philosophical figures were all searching for human meaning. The Axial Age and its aftermath saw lar large wars, the formation of large empires that stretched beyond the limits of earlier Iron Age societies. Significant for the time was the Persian Achaemenid Empire. The empire's vast territory extended from modern-day Egypt to Xi'an. The empire's legacy includes the rise of commerce over land routes through Eurasia as well as the spreading of Persian culture through the Middle East. The royal road allowed for efficient trade and taxation, though the Macedonian Alexander the Great conquered the Achaemenian Empire in its entirety. The unity of his conquest did not survive him. Greek culture and technology spread through, spread through the West and South Asia, often synthesizing with local cultures. Formation of empires and fragmentation. Separate Greek kingdoms, Egypt and Asia, encouraged trade and communication like earlier Persian administrations. Combined with the expansion of the Han Dynasty westward, the Silk Road as a series of routes made possible the exchange of goods between the Mediterranean Basin, South Asia, and East Asia. In South Asia, the Mauryan Empire briefly annexed much of the Indian subcontinent. Though short-lived, its reign had the legacy of spreading Buddhism and providing an inspiration for later Indian states. Supplanting the warring Greek kingdoms in the Western world came the growing Roman Republic and the Iranian Parthian Empire. 
as a result of empires, urbanization, and literacy spread to locations which had previously been at the periphery of civilization, as known by the large empires. Upon the turn of the millennium, the independence of tribal people and smaller kingdoms were threatened by more advanced states. Empires were not just remarkable for their territorial size, but for their administration and the dissemination of culture and trade. In this way, the influences of empires often extended far beyond their national borders. Trade routes expanded by land and sea and allowed for flow of goods between distant regions, even in the absence of communication. Distant nations such as Imperial Rome and the Chinese Han Dynasty rarely communicated, but trade goods did occur as evidenced by archaeological discoveries such as Roman coins in Vietnam. At this time, most of the world's population inhabited only a small part of the Earth's surface. Outside of civilization, large geographic areas such as Siberia, Sub-Saharan Africa, and Australia remained sparsely populated. The New World hosted a variety of separate civilizations, but its own trade networks are smaller due to the lack of draft animals in the wheel. Empires, with their immense military strength, remain fragile to civil wars, economic decline, and changing political environments inter internationally. In 220 AD, Han China collapsed into warring states with the, European Roman, with the European Roman Empire began to suffer from the turmoil in the 3rd century crisis. In Persia, the regime change took place from Parthian Empire to the more centralized Sasanian Empire. The land-based Silk Road continued to deliver profits and trade, but came under continual assault by nomads all on the northern frontiers of Eurasian nations. Safer sea route began to gain preference in the early centuries AD. Proselytizing religions began to replace polytheism and folk religions in many areas. Christianity gained a wide following in the Roman Empire, Zoroastrian became the state-enforced religion of Iran and Buddhism spread to, the East, spread to East Asia from South Asia. Social change, political transformation, as well as ecological events all contributed to the end of the ancient times at the beginning of the post-classical era in Eurasia, roughly around the year 500. Developments, religion and philosophy. The rise of civilization corresponded with the institutional sponsorship of belief in gods, supernatural forces, and the afterlife. During the Bronze Age, many civilizations adopted their own form of polytheism. Usually, polytheistic gods manifested human personality strengths and failings. Early religion was often based on location, which city or entire countries selecting a deity that would grant them preference and advantages over their competitors. Worship involved the construction of representation of deities and the granting of sacrifices. Sacrifices could be material goods, food, or in extreme cases, human sacrifice to please the deity. New philosophies and religions arose in both East and West, particularly about the 6th century BC. Over time, a great variety of religions developed around the world, with some of the earliest major ones being Hinduism, around 2000 BC, Buddhism, 5th century BC, and Jainism, 6th century BC in India and Zoroastrianism in Persia. The Abrahamic religions traced their origins to Judaism around 1700 BC. The ancient Indian philosophy is a fusion of two ancient traditions, Shramana and the Vedic tradition. Indian philosophy begins with the Vedas, where questions related to laws of nature, the origin of the universe, and the place of man in it are asked. Jainism and Buddhism are a continuation of the Shramana school of thought. The Shramanas cultivated a pessimistic worldview of the samsara as full of suffering and advocated renunciation and austerities. They laid stress on philosophical concepts like amisa, karma, janana, samsara, and moksha. While there are ancient relations between the Indian Vedas and the Iranian Avesta, the two main families of the Indo-Iranian philosophical traditions were characterized by fundamental differences in their implications for the human being's position in society and their view on the role of man in the universe. In the East, three schools of thought were to dominate Chinese thinking until the modern day. These were Taoism, Legalism, and Confucianism. 
The Confucian tradition, which would attain dominance, looks for political morality, not to the force of law, but to the power and example of tradition. Confucianism would later spread into the Korean Peninsula and Goguryeo and toward Japan. In the West, the Greek philosophical tradition, represented by Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle, were diffused throughout Europe and the Middle East in the 4th century BC by the conquest of Alexander the Great. After the Bronze and Iron Age religions formed, the rise and spread of Christianity through, through the Roman world marked the end of the Hellenistic philosophy and ushered in the beginnings of middle, medieval philosophy. Science and Technology In the history of technology and ancient science during the growth of ancient civilizations, ancient technological advances were produced in engineering. These advances stimulated other societies to adopt new ways of living and governance. Sometimes technological development was sponsored by the state. The characteristics of ancient Egyptian technology are indicated by a set of artifacts and customs that lasted for thousands of years. The Egyptians invented and used many basic machines, such as the ramp and the lever, to aid construction processes. The Egyptian the Egyptians also played an important role in developing Mediterranean maritime technology, including ships and lighthouses. Water managing quanats, which likely emerged on the Iranian plateau and possibly also in the Arabian Peninsula, sometime in the early first millennium BC, spread there slowly west and eastward. The history of science and technology in India dates back to ancient times. The Indus Valley civilization yields evidence of hydrography and both sewage collection and disposal being practiced by its inhabitants. Among the fields of science and technology pursued in India were metallurgy, astronomy, mathematics, Ayurveda. Some science, some ancient inventions include plastic surgery, cataract surgery, and Hindu-Arabic numeral system, and wood steel. The history of science and technology in China shows significant advances in science, technology, mathematics, and astronomy. The first recorded observation of comets and supernovas were made in China. Traditional Chinese medicine, acupuncture, and herbal medicine were also practiced. Ancient Greek technology developed at an unprecedented speed during the 5th century BC, continuing up to and including the Roman period and beyond. Inventions that are credited to the ancient Greeks such as the gear, the screw, bronze casting, techniques, water clock, water organ, torsion catapult, and the use of steam to operate some experimental, experimental machines and toys. Many of these inventions occurred late in the Greek period, often inspired by the need to improve weapons and tactics in war. Roman technology is the engineering practice which supported Roman civilization and made the expansion of Roman commerce and the Roman military possible over nearly a thousand years. The Roman Empire had the most advanced set of technology of their time, some of which may have been lost during the turbulent eras of the late antiquity and the early Middle Ages. Roman technological feats in many different areas, like civil engineering, construction materials, transport technology, and some inventions such as the mechanical reaper, went unmatched until the 19th century. Maritime activity. The history of ancient navigation began in earnest when men took to the sea in plank boats and ships propelled by sails hung on masts, like the ancient Egyptian Khufu ship from the mid third millennium BC. According to the Greek historian Herodotus, ne Necho Nico II sent out an expedition of Phoenicians, which in three years sailed from the Red Sea around Africa to the mouth of the Nile. Many current historians tend to believe Herodotus on his, this point, even though Herodotus himself was in disbelief that the Phoenicians had accomplished the act. Hanu was an ancient Egyptian explorer around 2750 BC and the first explorer of whom there is any knowledge. He made the first recorded exploring expedition, writing his account of his exploration in stone. Hanu, traveling along the Red Sea to Pud, and sailed to what is now part of eastern Ethiopia and Somalia. He returned to Egypt with great treasures, including precious myrrh and wood. Warfare Ancient warfare is war conducted from the beginnings of recorded history to the end of the ancient period, 
In Europe, the end of the antiquity is often equated with the fall of Rome in 476. In China, it can also be seen as the ending of the 5th century with the growing role of mounted warriors needed to counter the ever-growing threat from the north. The difference between prehistoric warfare and ancient warfare is less one of technology than of organization. The development of the first city-states and then empires allowed warfare to change dramatically. Beginning in Mesopotamia, states produced sufficient agricultural surplus that full-time ruling elites and military commanders could emerge. While the bulk of military forces were still farmers, the society could support having them campaigning rather than working the land for a portion of the year. Thus, organized armies developed for the first time. These new armies could help states grow in size and became increasingly centralized, and the first empire, that of the Sumerians, formed in Mesopotamia. Early ancient armies continued to primarily use bows and spears, the same weapons that had been developed in prehistoric times for hunting. Early armies in Egypt and China followed a similar pattern using massed infantry armed with bows and spears. Artwork and Music Ancient music developed in literate cultures, replacing prehistoric music. Ancient music returns to the various musical systems that were developed across various geographical regions such as Persia, India, China, Greece, Rome, Egypt, and Mesopotamia. Ancient music is designated by the characterization of the basic audible tones and scales. It may have been transmitted through oral or written system. Arts of, ancient world, arts of the ancient world refers to the many types of art that were in the cultures of ancient societies, such as those of ancient China, Egypt, Greece, India, Persia, Mesopotamia, and Rome. That's all we have time for in this video. I hope you enjoyed that and learned a little bit about ancient history. There's so much more in this article, but I would rather pick out different pieces of history and read whole articles on different, you know, more involved pieces of history. If anybody has any suggestions for any Wikipedia article, doesn't have to be history, doesn't have to be animals, could be you know, anything. Go ahead and suggest it, and thank you so much for coming with me on this journey, and uh, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.